Welcome to the O-Level Chemistry Lecture Series. Today's topic is on atomic structure, so make sure you have the notes on hand. These are some of the re recommended ad additional practices which you may try. And let's begin with the proper lesson proper atomic structure. So before we start to decipher the atom, we must first know what is an atom. So by definition, an atom is the smallest component of the element which still has the chemical properties of the element. So the element, an, an atom can be made up of smaller subparticles and it is made up of smaller subparticles, subatomic particles, um, but each subatomic particle does not have the chemical properties of that element itself. So if I were to split carbon and a carbon atom into its subatomic particles, the different particles will not exhibit the same chemical properties as carbon. So this part of the definition is extremely important where the atom is the smallest component having the chemical properties of the element. So most of you would have seen this diagram before in the atom. You will notice that it is actually made up of a few parts here. The two main parts of which are the nucleus and the electron shells. There are two shells here, if you notice, there's one shell here and there's one shell here. So what makes up each of this? What, what goes into each of these this main parts? So nucleus, as, as the name sounds, the nucleus, the nucleus means, means it's the central portion contains the protons and the neutrons. And in carbon's case, there's six protons and six neutrons. From the periodic table, you would have seen this way of representing carbon, C12, six here. This six represents the proton number, i.e. the number of protons. And this number on top represents the mass number, i.e. the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. The shells contain electrons, so notice that there's two electrons in the first shell here and there are four electrons in the second shell here. From experiment, it is, it is also known that these three particles are actually extremely light. So for the proton neutrons, they have, they have almost similar mass. So you notice the relative mass to each other is 1 is to 1. And electron is way, way, way lighter, minus 31 versus minus 27. So it is about 1 over 1840 from the mass of, masses of the protons and neutrons. And these three particles have a charge as well, except the neutron. Neutron has no charge, zero. The proton is positive one and the electron is negative one. So based on these relative charges here, and the earlier diagram over here, you will come to realize that the number of protons and the number of electrons, the number of electrons, in a neutral molecule, on a neutral atom, must be the same. Because a neutral atom means that overall the atom has no charge. So in this case, the carbon atom or the C atom has no charge. There's no charge here. No charge. So to do this, we must have equal number of positive charges and equal number of negative charges. There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 electrons. So 6 negative charges and 6 positive charges, overall it's 0. So the proton number, in fact, tells us the number of electrons in a atom which is in an atom which is neutral, electrically neutral. Okay. So based on all these tiny mass values here, we can also conclude that most of the mass of the atom is contained in the nucleus, and the mass of the electrons is negligible. Hence, when you if you recall this. 12C6. The mass number, I say again, is just number of protons plus number of neutrons. I don't add in the number of electrons here because the mass of the electrons is so negligible. In order for it to become substantial, you will probably, you will need tens of thousands of electrons and this doesn't happen in nature. So they are ignored during the calculation of the mass of an atom. Alright, this was also mentioned earlier from the picture of the atomic structure of carbon, number of protons must be the same as the number of electrons in order for the overall atom to be electrically neutral, means no charge. If it has a charge, if it has a charge, a charged particle, we don't call an atom anymore, we call it an ion. So if it's a positive charge, we call it a cation. If it's a negative charge, we call it an anion. This one, we will cover a little bit more on this later on in this topic. Okay, if you look through your notes, you will also see this experiment called the Rutherford's Gold Foil Scattering, scattering Experiment. So this experiment actually tells the, the experimenter the parts or the, the composition of, of the subatomic structure of an atom. So based on this experiment, 
um, Rutherford actually fired particles. So if I were to draw the atomic structure of gold, so one atom, one atom, one atom here. So Rutherford actually fired alpha particles. Alpha particles are, are something like helium particles, possibly charged helium particles, um, towards the gold foil. And you notice that the particles passed, most of it passed right through. So if they pass right through, it means that the bulk of the atom is actually empty space, correct? But at the same time, you notice that some of them were deflected as well. Why, why were they deflected? The, the nucleus, if you, if you recall, the nucleus is protons plus neutrons. The protons are positively charged. Neutrons are neutral. So the nucleus is actually effectively positively charged. So the, heat, the, so the alpha particles being positively charged helium particles, if they move near the positively charged nucleus, they will be repelled. So when they are repelled, they are deflected away from the nucleus. But some of these particles actually go head on and they collide with the nucleus. So if it collides with the nucleus, imagine yourself, if you throw a ping pong ball at a wall, you throw a ping pong ball at a wall, the ping pong ball will jump back towards you. So this was what he observed as well. Some of the particles actually came back in the same direction towards the source from which they were fired. So based on this, right, Rutherford was able to conclude that number one, the bulk of the atom is empty space, and number two, the nucleus contains most of the mass because everything else passes right through, and that the nucleus was positively charged because the positively charged alpha particles bounced away or bounced, or were deflected away from the nucleus if they passed near to it. Okay. All right. So. Based on the earlier table on the charges of the particles, you would expect that in an electric field, so this is a positively charged plate and this is a negatively charged plate. So this is a positive plate and the negative plate is below. You expect that the particles will be deflected as shown here. Electron would be attracted towards the positive plate because it is negatively charged. The proton would be towards the negative plate because it is positively charged and the, and the neutron will just pass right through because it is electrically neutral. And based on the relative masses, electron being 1, 8, 1 over 1840, proton 1, neutron 1, that the electrons will be deflected a lot more. Notice they are deflected a lot more than the protons. The protons are deflected a little bit. The electrons are deflected a lot more. A lot more. So this, it is angle A and this angle B. I can say angle A is much bigger than angle B because they are way lighter. They are way, way lighter, right? So the lighter it is, the more easily it is deflected towards the plates. So this also shows, this also experimentally show that the mass of an electron is much, much lower than the mass of a proton. And it also shows that the proton is positively charged and the neutron is negatively charged. And the neutron is neutral. Right? So this one was what we, what you've seen earlier, carbon 12, 6, so this is how it's represented in chemistry. All right? On top, this is the mass number or the nuclear number. It contains, it, it counts the number of protons and neutrons in the nucleus of an atom. The bottom number here is a proton number and for an electrically neutral atom such as helium, this number is also equal to the number of electrons. Okay? So, 2 plus Two positive charges, two negative, two negative charges. Overall, it will be zero. All right. So now let's attempt checkpoint one in your notes. You can pause the video now to attempt the checkpoint. Continue the video once you are done. So for checkpoint one, what is the name, mass number, atomic number, and neutron number of the following elements? So A, B, C. The first one looks to be carbon. Second one looks to be hydrogen. Third one looks to be calcium. So let's answer this question. Pen. Get my color pen out. All right. So the first one is carbon. The mass number will be on top, 12. Atomic number will be the one below, or the proton number is 6. Neutron number is the, this is proton plus neutron. This is proton. So neutron number will be just 12 minus 6 or 6. All right. For hydrogen. What do we get for hydrogen? This is hydrogen. 
the mass number would be 1. The atomic number would also be 1, because it's 1, 1. So you notice that if this 1 minus 1, H actually doesn't have a neutron. So it is simply a proton. 1 proton and 1 electron. Calcium, 40, 20. Calcium, mass number 40, proton number 20, neutron number 40 minus 20 or 20. Very right, simple question. Now let's move back to the slides. The next term we'll introduce here is called isotopes. So what are isotopes? They are in fact atoms of the same element, but with different number of neutrons. If you look at the periodic table, the way the periodic table is arranged is in terms of the proton number. So every element will have a unique proton number. For example, chlorine. Chlorine has a proton number of 17. It will always be 17. 17 only belongs to chlorine. If I change 17 to something else, it becomes a totally different element. Okay, so protons, the proton number of an element never changes. But but if you if you recall, if you recall in the nucleus, it is protons plus neutrons, right? Correct? Neutrons. So the number of neutrons can in fact change. And when the number of neutrons change, we call the atom with a different number of neutrons, but same number of protons isotopes. So for example, chlorine 35, chlorine 37. Both have 17 protons, but the mass number of chlorine 35 is 35, which will minus out 35 minus 17, it will give us 18 neutrons. 37 minus 17 gives us 20 neutrons. So chlorine 37 has two more neutrons than chlorine 35. So based on this, we will, we will be able to make a very straightforward deduction now that chlorine 37 is heavier than chlorine 35 okay which means they will have different physical properties but similar chemical properties why similar chemical properties this one in fact will in fact be covered later on in this topic so let me share a little bit first the chemical properties of an element or of an atom it depends on the number of electrons only Okay, so both chlorine 35 and chlorine chlorine 35 and chlorine 37 both contain seven electrons in its outermost shell. What is outermost shell? Later we will see more about this as well. But for now, seven electrons in its outermost shell. So so long as they have the same number of electrons in the outermost shell, they will have the same chemical properties. But they have different physical properties. Why? Notice that chlorine 37, 35, chlorine 37, this is two more, this is two more versus chlorine 35. So as a result, one physical property which is different is, for example, the boiling point. So if H1, H2, so this is hydrogen 1, hydrogen 2, hydrogen 2, and this H2, there's two of hydrogen 2. So this mass is 4 versus this mass is 2. This is actually 1 plus 1. This is 2 plus 2. So this is 4, this is 2. H2 has actually a higher boiling point of 249.49. It's a slightly, slightly higher boiling point compared to hydrogen 1. So why does a boiling point change when your mass increases? This one will be touched on in chemical bonding. So watch for the chemical bonding video. Okay, so now let's try checkpoint two with some simple questions for us to find out what are the subatomic composition of some isotopes. So in checkpoint two, question number one, hydrogen has three isotopes with nucleon numbers. Nucleon is the nucleus. One, two, and three. Okay, let me make my pen a little bit thinner. Okay, and these are given the names protium, deuterium, and tritium. Right, so let's fill up this table. Now, protons, this will be 1, 1, 1. Proton number never changes. It never changes so long as it is the same element. Number of electrons will be the same as number of protons. So it is also 1, 1, 1. But for isotopes, number of neutrons would vary. So neutrons is found in the nucleus. So the nuclear, nuclear number is actually... 
P plus N, proton plus neutrons. So if we minus out the protons, we will get number of neutrons. So this is 1 minus 1 is 0. This is 2 minus 1. 2 minus 1. So it will give us 1. And 3 minus 1, it gives us 2. So when it reacts with oxygen, what does it form? H2, when it reacts with oxygen, it gives us H2O, water. How do we write this equation? How do we balance this equation? You'll be covered on in the topic of chemical bonding. So don't worry too much about this now. So for now, we know this, is, this forms H2O. So when protium forms water, what does it form? It forms H2O1. When deuterium forms water, is H2O2. And when tritium forms H2O, it's H2O3. Deuterium is in fact called heavy water. Why is it heavy water? Because it is heavier than the usual water we always find. Tritium. Tritium is formed in nuclear reactors. It is not really found in nature. Question number two. We have particles A, B, C, and D. And we are supposed to deduce which is the greatest mass. So how do we find which one has the greatest mass? Simply scan through the nuclear number because the nuclear number is number of protons plus neutrons. Electrons mass is negligible, so we don't take it into consideration. So which one, which one has the greatest mass? It is atom number D. And which two atoms are isotopes? Isotopes means same number of protons, but different number of neutrons. So if we look through, protons same, same, must be these two. Neutrons are different. One is 8 and one is 9. So A and C are isotopes of each other. Right, let's move back to the slides. So we've gone through the number of protons, number of neutrons, number of electrons in, the, in an atom, and how to calculate the numbers and how to obtain them from the chemical symbols, which you can see from the periodic table. So now let's move on to something, uh, something which is a little bit more unique, the electronic structure of an atom. Electronic structure, if you make a spark deduction, electronic basically means some electrons. It refers to electrons. So what is the, what is the arrangement? electronic structure. What is the arrangement of the electrons of an atom which gives it at its electronic structure? Okay, arrangement of electrons in an atom. And you and you will recall earlier the carbon, the diagram of carbon, you will notice that there's two shells. There are two shells. The first one has two electrons. The second one has actually four electrons. So why is it arranged this way? So why can't I simply stuff all the one, two, three, four, five, six electrons, stuff all into the first shell? So why can't I do this? So this section here will explain to you how do you draw a proper electronic structure of an atom. Okay, so let's take a look at the, the rules first, the rules. So assuming this is a generic atom, and there are three shells here, one, two, three. The first shell which is closest to the nucleus, so this part here is the nucleus. This is the nucleus. The first shell which is closest to the nucleus can only hold a maximum of two electrons. And we call this the n equals to one shell or the first shell. And because it is always clear, nearest, to, it's nearest to the nucleus, it is always filled first. It is always filled first. So we don't fill the third shell, then second shell, then the first shell. We fill it in the order of one, two, three. So n is two, the second shell holds a max of eight electrons, and the third shell holds a max of 18 electrons. How are these numbers derived? It's actually 2n squared. So if n is 1, you get 2. n is 2, you get 8. n is 3, you get 18. So this formula tells you the number of electrons, the max number of electrons that can fit into each shell. Let's try our hand on checkpoint 3. We will go through the first example together. So let us draw the hydrogen it's electronic structure. So from the periodic table, you will notice that H is H11. Okay, so from the H11 formula, we can, we will know the mass number, that is 1, and we will know the proton number, that is 1 as well. Okay, so based on this, we can do a simple subtraction, and we know that the proton has one proton, hydrogen has one proton, one electron, and zero neutrons. So with these numbers in, on hand, we can begin to draw the structure. So first of all, we draw the nucleus. We draw from the inside out. We draw the nucleus first. We know the nucleus has one proton. So we write one 
P. So what, what is P? P can be anything in the world. So we need to include a key later to tell me what the P represents. So step one, we draw the nuclear. Step two, we draw the electron shell. So we start from the inside. First electron shell, n equals to one shell. This is the n equals to one shell. And if you recall, n equals to one shell, max you can feel two electrons. In this case, we only have one electron, so you just pop it in. And then you draw your key over here. So somebody who looks at a diagram knows that this dot represents electrons and this P represents the proton. So this is the electronic structure of the hydrogen atom. Right? Simple enough. Let's try the let's try the rest of the questions in checkpoint three by yourself. Checkpoint three. Second one is helium. Helium you will notice that it is H E is H E and four two, which means that it has two protons and four minus two, two neutrons. And also two protons means it has two electrons. So let's draw the nucleus first. So the nucleus of helium, one nice circle, and there are two protons and two neutrons inside. Then we draw the first shell of helium. So the n equals to one shell can only contain how many electrons? Correct. Maximum of two electrons. Two electrons. The filling order is always one round. So if the first shell can only fill two electrons and helium has two electrons, this is the structure of helium. But we don't stop here, we must write the key. So the key in this case, P is protons, N is neutron, and the cross represents the electron. You can use a dot to represent the electron as well, but dot is much harder to draw compared to a cross. Right? So let's go for the most efficient way of drawing the electronic structure. Lithium Lithium, you will see that it has three protons, four neutrons. If it has three protons, it means that it has also three electrons. So if you draw the structure again, it will be three protons and four neutrons in the nucleus. The first shell contains two electrons maximum. What about the, the, the last electron? It will go into the next shell. So again, you write your key. For P, N, and your cross as above. Okay, so two shells for lithium. Carbon has six protons, which means it has six electrons, six neutrons here. So six protons, six neutrons, six electrons. So first shell can fill a max of two electrons. Second shell can fill a max of how many? 2N squared. So if n equals to 2, it means that you can fill a max of 8 electrons. So I can put all the remaining 6 minus 2 equals to 4 electrons into the second shell. So filling order, 1, 2, 3, 4. And of course, you must write your key. Magnesium has 12 protons and 12 neutrons. So this means that it has 12 electrons as well. So if we draw magnesium, the nucleus will contain 12 protons and 12 neutrons. First shell contains two electrons. The second shell can contain a max of eight electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight plus two is only 10. We have two more electrons, so we need one more shell, which one, two electrons. Okay, so overall this is 12 electrons. You have your key as well for your P, N, and cross, and this is the structure of magnesium. Simple enough. Nitrogen, 7 protons, 7 neutrons. So 7 protons means it has 7 electrons as well, because it must be electrically neutral. So if you draw the nucleus, 7N, 7P, first shell, 2 electrons. Second shell, max of 8 electrons, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Just nice. And your key. Neon. 10 protons, 10 neutrons. So 10 electrons as well. So 10 protons, 10 neutrons in the nucleus. 10 electrons. First shell contains 2. Second shell contains 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And we have your neon. And your key. 
argon, 20 neutrons, 18 protons, so 18 electrons, 20n, 18p, first round, 1, 2, second round, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, this is 8 plus 2 is 10, we need 8 more, so we need one more shell, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and your key. And you have the electronic structure of argon. Okay, we move on into the next concept called valence shell electrons. Just now earlier, you, you should have, you, you should have remembered that I said that isotopes have the same chemical properties because they have the same number of outermost electrons. So this is where valence shell comes in. The valence shell basically represents the outermost shell from the nucleus. It is the shell which is furthest from the nucleus. So if uh, an atom has three shells, this would be the valence shell. If it has two shells, then this would be the valence. If it has two shells, this, this would be the valence shell. If it has one shell, this would be the valence shell. Basically, it is, it is the shell which is the furthest away from the nucleus, or we can call it the outermost shell. Okay, valence shell. So the number of electrons in the valence shell affects the properties of this element. This is aluminium. So you notice the aluminium has one, two, three valence electrons. So properties of aluminium is affected by these three valence electrons. Chlorine and carbon over here. Chlorine, if you count through all the numbers, chlorine is 17 electrons. So the first shell can take two, the second shell takes eight, the third shell would mean that it is seven. So in chlorine's valence shell, there are seven valence electrons. Carbon has six electrons. So if the first shell takes two, the second shell has four electrons left. Okay. And from the from this from this distribution of electrons, we can actually come up with something called the electronic configuration. So the way I wrote this here is almost the electronic configuration of the element. So this basically refers, the configuration refers to the numerical expression. If I say electronic structure, if it's electronic structure, it represents to the drawing. This is the drawing, this is the structure. Okay, don't, don't confuse this, these two things. This is the structure, the configuration is a numerical expression. So earlier, chlorine here, if it's two, the first shell is two, second shell is eight, third shell is seven, it is actually 2.8.7. For carbon, first shell is 2, second shell is 4, so it's 2.4, or 2.4, 2.8.7. So based on this, it tells us that in the end, it goes to one shell, it has two electrons, n equals to 2 has 8, and n equals to 3 has 7. So we can also see straight away that valence electrons, for valence electrons, 7. So this is the electronic configuration. Okay, this is the config. This is the structure. Don't confuse these two things. Okay, so let's do a quick example, actually quite simple. Oxygen, 8 electrons. O is 16, 8. So 8 electrons, the first shell can only take 2 electrons, which means you're left with 6. Second shell will take everything else, so it is 2.6. Magnesium, 12 electrons. The first shell takes 2. Second shell takes 8. 8 plus 2 is 10, you have 2 more. The outermost shell, or the valence shell, takes 2, so it is 2.8.2. Okay, let's take a quick try at checkpoint 4. Pause the video now to try the checkpoint. So for checkpoint 4, hydrogen, 1 electron, so it will be simply 1. Helium, 2 electrons, so it will be simply 2. Lithium has 3 electrons, so it will be 2.1, correct? Carbon, 6 electrons, 2.4. Magnesium, 12, 2.8.2. .2. Nitrogen, 7, 2.5. Neon is 10, so it's 2.8. Argon is 18, 2.8. How many more? 8 more. 2.8.8. .8. Okay? Simple enough. Why do we write the electronic configurations of all these elements? Okay, and how does it relate to where the element is placed in the periodic table? Earlier I said it is placed in terms of proton number. But because the proton number increases, one by one increases, it is a consecutive increase from each element. And 
the number of new electrons in a electrically neutral atom is the same as, as the number of protons. So does the periodic table actually give a trend of the electrons of an atom? Let's take a look. So a periodic table arranges the elements based on the proton number. So take a look, hydrogen is 1, helium is 2, so it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, da, 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 so and so forth. And because of this arrangement, you will notice he, lithium here, it has one valence electrons, 2.1. Sodium, 2.8.1. Potassium, 2.8.8.1. All these elements, lithium, sodium, and potassium, they all have one valence electron only. You look down this, this, this column as well. You see two valence electrons, 2, 2, and 2. So this is what we call a group in the periodic table. So all elements in the same group have the same number of valence electrons. Okay, so take a look. Uh, all two valence electrons. Okay. And if you observe across this way as well, observe across this way, you notice this is how many? This is 2.1. This is 2.2. This is 2.3. This is 2.4. And so and so forth. But for all these elements along this row, you will see that they only have two shells, n equals to 1 and n equals to 2 shell. So this is what we call a period. So elements in the same period have the same number of electron shells. Okay, and this is actually very useful. It's very useful to help us determine the formation of ions for a particular atom. Because there are some trends that we can quickly glimpse from the group and from the period so we need not actually count the electronic configuration of the atom but first of all what is an ion what is an ion so earlier we mentioned atom okay an atom atom electrically neutral smallest particle having the same chemical properties as that of the element an ion as the name suggests is something which is charged so it is an atom or group of atoms that has an electrical charge. We call it an ion. Okay, the ion can be either positively charged or it can be negatively charged. So how do ions form? It is formed by the loss or gain of valence electrons to attain the stable electronic configuration of a noble gas. So what is this last line here? Okay, don't worry first. Let's take a look at the first key point here. Lose or gain valence electrons. Okay, so if if let's say I have my uh, let's take a look. We have lithium. Lithium has three electrons, so it has a two dot one structure, electronic configuration. This is a config of lithium. If you draw the structure out, it'll be lithium one two and lithium one more. We know that lithium forms lithium plus. Lithium forms lithium plus. So how does it form lithium plus? It must lose this electron. It loses the outermost electron. So lithium has three protons in its nucleus. If it loses one electron, it is left with two electrons. So three protons and two electrons overall, this is three plus, three positive charges, and this is two negative charges, which means the overall would be one positive charge. That's why lithium is Li plus. Yes, lost one electron to form Li plus. So if an atom gains an electron, what do you think will be the charge? Yes, correct. It will be negatively charged. Okay, so before we go into the stable electronic configuration of noble gas, other than losing or gaining of electrons, atoms can also share valence electrons. Take note, when they share valence electrons, they do not form an ion. Okay? When they do this, they do not form an ion. So an ion is only formed when they gain or lose valence electrons to attain the stable electronic configuration of a noble gas. Okay, so what is this stable electronic configuration which I've talked about? So if you if you if you look at your look at the periodic table in your in your hand now. Do you have one? If you have one, take it out. If you don't have one, search for it on, on Google, you'll probably find one. Um, 
look at the last row, the last straight vertical, the last vertical vertical column on the extreme right hand side. We call it group zero. So group zero, if you look down, you will notice that in group zero, the elements all have eight valence electrons. Except for helium, this is two. So all these elements in group zero, they are called noble gas. Why is it noble? Because it used to be called inert, inert gases. Okay, uh, but inert basically stands for totally unreactive. But this these gases can actually react with very very reactive elements under special conditions. Okay, but um, for for simpl for simplicity for simplicity sake, let's assume that it is unreactive. Okay, so why is it unreactive? So when scientists analyze the structures of this this these gases, the atomic structure of these gases, they realize that all these all these gases, all these elements have eight valence electrons, except for helium, which has two, and they call this the duplet or the octet configuration, or we can lump these two together to call it the noble gas structure. So noble gas structure means that it is either a duplet or octet configuration. So when it has the octet or duplet configuration, it is extremely unreactive and very stable. So if you see a Ion, if you see an element like lithium, lithium has three valence electrons. Okay? Has three valence has three electrons, sorry. So it's two dot one. The stable configuration would be the duplet configuration. So if lithium loses one electron, if it loses this valence electron, it will form Li plus, which is two. Two electrons only. So notice that this is the same as the configuration of helium. So Li plus is stable. That's why the lithium atom prefers to lose electron to form lithium plus, which is stable. Why? Why is it stable? Because it is the it has a duplet configuration or the noble gas structure. Okay. So later on, when I go into I go into more depth on the formation of positive ions and negative ions, you will see that these ions try to gain or lose electrons. Now these atoms try to gain or lose electrons to attain the noble gas structure. So we start with the cation formation first. So metals tend to form cations. Metals are on the left hand side of the periodic table. So to form cations it means it must become positively charged. We must have a net excess of protons. So how do you have a net excess of protons? We must lose the electrons. Take note, only valence electrons can be lost. Okay, only valence electrons can be lost. Later on, you will see only the valence, the valence shell can gain electrons. But in this case, only valence electrons are, can be lost. So sodium, for example, has one valence electron. If it loses one, it forms 2.8 noble gas configuration. It can also gain seven. It can gain one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But to gain seven, it's way difficult than losing one. Okay, it's easier to throw away one than to take seven things in. So for sodium, it prefers to lose one to give Na+, plus, which has the noble gas configuration. So this is the Na+, plus cation, because it is positively charged. Right? So let's prove that it is positively charged. The atom of sodium has 11 protons. In a neutral atom of sodium, it is 11 electrons. So 11, 11 is zero. How? However, however, now this one has same 11 protons, but it has only 10 electrons. So overall, it has one more positive charge. That's why it is Na+. Plus. Na+. Plus. We don't write the 1 out because the 1 is implicit. When I write a plus out, it means it is 1+. plus. If I write 2+, it means it is two positively, it has two excess positive charges. Which also means that it has lost how many electrons? Correct, it has lost two electrons. Okay, so from the periodic table, group one metals, because they only have one valence electron, like lithium 2.1, only one valence electron, it can only lose one. So it forms an ion of plus, of one plus charge. Group two, it has two valence electrons, so it loses two to form two plus. Group three, three plus. And as we move on and on and on, 
do you think group 7 elements will lose 7 electrons or do you think they will gain 1 electron to form the duplet, uh, I mean the octet configuration? Is it easier to lose 7 or to gain 1? So let's take a look. Chlorine, for example, has 7 valence electrons. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So for it to attain the noble gas configuration, it can either become 2.8 or it can become 2.8.8. So this one involves it losing 7, this one involves it gaining 1. So of course, it is easier to gain 1 than to lose 7. So chlorine gains one electron from another atom, and it forms Cl minus. Okay, it gains one electron, it gains one electron to form Cl minus. So Cl minus has 2.8.8 configuration. This is the stable, noble gas structure. So this is preferred. So how do we count the charge? Why do I, why why is it overall negative charge? By itself, chlorine has seventeen protons, seventeen electrons, and they cancel each other out to give zero. But when it gains one extra electron, now this is eighteen. So seventeen positive charges, eighteen negative charges. Overall, you will become a negative one negative, and we write Cl minus. We don't write Cl1 minus because if we write minus, it is implicit that it is only 1. If I write 2, for example, O2 minus, how many electrons has oxygen gained? 2 electrons, correct. O has gained 2 electrons above its electrically neutral state in order for it to have a 2 minus charge. So simply speaking, group 5, those with x dot y dot 5, they would, to get uh, x dot y dot 8, it's easy to gain 3 electrons and to lose 5 electrons. So they gain 3 valence electrons. And as a result, they have a overall 3 minus charge. Group 6. Group 6, easier to gain 2 electrons and to lose 6 electrons. So if they gain 2 electrons, overall would be a 2 minus charge. For example here, O2 minus. Group 7, like chlorine, from 7 to 8, easier to gain 1 electron than to lose all 7 electrons. So if they gain 1 extra electron, overall it will be a 1 minus charge. Okay, so in essence, in essence, to form an ion, atoms lose or gain electrons, only valence electrons, to attain the stable electronic structure of a noble Yes. So lithium only loses this electron to give you lithium plus. Okay, it doesn't lose these two electrons. It only loses its valence electron. Very important. Take note, only the valence electrons are involved in the formation of an ion. Okay, so now let's try checkpoint 5. Checkpoint 5, question 1A, 1B, and the first few questions are for you to recap how to draw your electronic structures. So the first one is beryllium, 4 electrons. 4 electrons, beryllium, it means that first shell, 2 electrons, second shell, 2 electrons. Remember to write your key as well, electron. Fluorine, 9 electrons. So first shell, 2 electrons, the second shell will have how many electrons? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven plus two is nine electrons. So again, your key electron. Magnesium has 12 electrons. So first shell, two electrons. Second shell, eight electrons. With this, we only have 10. We must have one more third shell. And this is magnesium, and remember to write your key. Sulfur has 16 electrons, so first shell, 2 electrons. Second shell, 8 electrons. With this, we have 10 electrons, so we need one more shell for the 6 more electrons. Remember to write your key as well for sulfur. Okay, question number 2. Which of the following ions has the correct number of electrons, neutrons, and protons shown. So let's take a look. 
sulfur S2 minus 34 16 the number below this number below is the number of protons protons are in the nucleus it is in the nucleus they are not involved in a chemical reaction they are not involved in formation of ions not involved okay when the ions are formed the only part of an atom which is involved in ion formation are the valence electrons so if s is 16 here the protons cannot be lost this is wrong magnesium is 12 proton is 12 is correct hydrogen is 1 correct fluorine is 9 correct okay, the next thing we look at is the electrons because these are all ions correct ions involve the gain or loss of valence electrons to form a positive charge you must lose electrons to form a negatively charged ion you must gain electrons so magnesium has 12 protons if it has 12 protons it means that it would have 12 electrons but this is 2 plus so it must have lost 2 electrons so 12 minus 2 will be 10 H plus 1 proton it means it has 1 electron 1 electron if it's H plus it means that we have lost that only electron so this must be 0 so this is wrong fluorine 9 protons it means that it has 9 electrons to gain a to get a negative charge you must gain one extra electron so it must be 9 plus 1 so this should be 10 so this is also wrong so the answer is B and let's check the neutrons 25 minus 12 it's 13 so this is correct so the answer for question 2 is B question 3 which one of the following does not have the same number of electrons as an atom of argon so based on the number of electrons take a quick count so sulfur has gained two extra calcium lost two chlorine gained one aluminum has lost three and number of elect number of electrons in argon which is let me take a look for argon it is 2.8.8 so argon has 18 electrons if you do a quick count you will know that the only ion here which does not have the same number of electrons as the atom of argon is Al3+. plus. Okay, question number four, which particle has a different number of electron shells from the other one? So same thing, so Al has lost three, Cl has gained one, O has gained two, neon is by itself, so neon by itself it has, let me take a look, it has two shells, if you count, 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 chlorine has actually three three shells. It's 2.8.7, but this has gained one electron, so it's 2.8.8, three shells. Everyone else has two shells, so Cl- minus is the correct answer. Question number five. Three elements X, Y, Z have consecutive increasing atomic numbers. If element Y was a noble gas, so Y is noble gas, what is the symbol for the ions formed by elements X and Z? So if Y is a noble gas, Y would be at the end of the periodic table. Tables like this, Y would be here. X would be in front, and Z would be the next one right at the front. So X is 8 electrons, so X has 7 valence electrons. Z would have 1 valence electron. So it's 1, 2, 3, da, 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 8, then 1, 2, 3, da, 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 8. So it means that X will prefer to gain one electron to form X minus and Z will prefer to lose one electron to form Z plus which means that the answer is A X minus and Z plus okay which of the following statements is not true atoms of the same element may have different masses correct this is isotopes they have different number of neutrons which result in their different mass numbers because mass number is proton plus neutron atoms of different elements may have the same number of neutrons it is true as well take a quick count from the periodic table and you'll find out atoms of different elements may lose or gain the same number of electrons of course if you're in group one for example lithium and sodium they have different number of electrons but they both lose only one valence electron so this is correct the last one atoms of elements from the same group of the 
periodic table have the same number of protons. This is obviously wrong because only the same element has the same proton number. Okay, Only the same element has the same proton number. If the proton number changes, the element changes. It is not the same element anymore. In the same group, you have the same number of valence electrons. So this statement is not true. Answer is 6D. D. So with this, we have come to the end of atomic structure. Look through the slides again. Look through your notes again. Attempt the checkpoint if it's not clear. This is a relatively easy topic. Pretty simple concepts, simple counting numbers here and there. Just take note that when it's positive, it means it is a loss of electrons. When it is a negative, it is a gain of electrons. And the number of electrons, they can go into each shell. First shell is 2, second shell is 8, so on and so forth. 2n square. And other than this, you are set. This is an easy topic, and this will lead into chemical bonding. So I will see you again in the lecture series on chemical bonding. Till then, have a good day.